Hello? It's 1.30, so let's uh, go ahead and start. Uh, welcome to Sixth Law Working Group. And um, My name is Gabriel Montenegro, and uh, my co-chair, uh, Samita Chakravarti, unfortunately, is not here with us, um, nor our secretary, James Woodia. So um, I'm really going to need some help from you, particularly um, this time around. Uh, we already have the... Um, uh, great services. Uh, thank you very much, of Dominique, for minute taking. But uh, the minute taking is an activity that's best done as a community. We have an Etherpad. Is there anybody else who can uh, add some stuff to the Etherpad at the same time? Help uh, Dominique uh, taking minutes, or even if you don't take them on Etherpad, anybody who can take notes on their own and then send to the chairs your minutes. Anybody else for minute taking? Uh, Jabber scribe sold. Okay, thank you. That's it. Okay, so uh, even if you didn't raise your hand, if you have any time, add stuff to the the minutes or send them to me afterwards. I would be highly appreciated. Um, okay, this is the note. Well, hopefully you've seen this uh, several times this week. If you have not, you're not familiar with it or don't agree with it, then please remove yourself from this room. These are the rules for participating. They are that important. Thank you. This is the agenda for today. Uh, we have um, not a completely full agenda, but typically we grow to, to fill it. So uh, we do have a fair number of, of documents. Some of them are just updates, but there we go. We'll have about an hour and a half instead of two hours. A uh, quick uh, update on draft status since, uh, no, that was Prague, not Chicago, since 99, whatever, wherever it was. The 77, uh, six, uh, 775 update is past working group last call. Uh, some comments have been incorporated. Uh, I believe uh, Samita still has some comments to produce or incorporate. Uh, I am uh, also uh, a gating item there because I'm in the process of writing the Shepherd document and giving a last look. So as soon as uh, the chairs can get their act together, we'll get this off to the ISG. Um, as for the backbone router, it was updated with some comments and uh, also there was a, an IPR uh, disclosure on this document. Uh, APND also received comments from, from Rene Struik, um, crypto expert. Those are already incorporated. Well, you'll, we'll hear an update on, on this anyways. Um, NFC updated with some comments. We'll hear an update as well. Uh, Bluetooth Mesh uh, just had uh, an exchange with the authors, was it last night, uh, I believe. Basically, um, Oh, Carlos is there. So do you, do you want to give a quick update on the mic? Because you don't have a presentation today. So you might want to just give a quick update right now, if, if you're OK with that. Carlos Gomez. So the, the document has been stable for a while. Uh, we are not aware of any outstanding issue. Mm -hmm. However, uh, we thought that before actually requesting the working group last call, it would be good to have some implementation experience. So we have started uh, to work in that direction. Uh, however, at this moment, we haven't yet uh, fulfilled that uh, to have our own implementation. And uh, also, I'd like to, to make a call so that uh, if you think this could be interesting, please also try to, to implement the draft as a validation of it. Okay. Yeah, so this is a very important point. Um, we are delaying the draft. No problem with that. Uh, because there's something very important called implementation. And I think it makes no sense to publish something if we haven't finished the implementation, because the point of it is figuring out, oh, we missed this, we missed that. And if it's already published, it's way too late. So um, this is this is exactly what we should do. We should uh, you know, um, give priority to finishing off implementation, validating what, what the spec is all about. And then you know, we'll, we'll proceed. That, um, so unless there is any other urgency, I think that, that makes perfect sense to wait for. For implementation, that no problem. Excellent. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, what else? 
use cases. There's a new version. We will hear an update uh, uh, today. On the LIGO 6 low expiration time, that document disappeared. Now it's called draft ITF. Uh, I forget the new, there's a new name for it, but um, if anybody remembers what it is. Anyway, we adopted it. We, there's an implementation, WSN, open WSN. Uh, there seemed to be pretty healthy interest in the working group, so that's proceeding, and it's now a zero zero official draft. Um, and uh, PLC, it's, uh, we will actually have a, an update on that uh, today. Uh, so there's some discussion going on with uh, ITU SG15, uh, and so you know, we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll see you next week. Um, okay, this is for later. So why don't we go ahead and start, uh, Pascal? Oh, there it is. Oh, shoot. Okay, no mouse. Is that working? Setting up device. Wait a minute, it's not displaying what it should. It's okay. So, um, the slide was trying to assume that yesterday. No, 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 no. Uh, I'm just for some reason it didn't as soon as I put it in. There you go. Oh, shoot. Never mind. There we go. There we go. Okay. We have, yeah. I was in this room this morning, and the, the, the mic stopped. So I was in this room this morning, and the, the mic went out of battery.
So I'm not surprised that it works now. Okay, so so basically the whole story goes that we have extending 6 dot um, Now it looks very, very much like a layer three association, uh, an equivalent of a 2.11 association, but at layer three. And coupled with the backbone router, we we get um, the capability to, to roam um, between layer three access points, which are called the backbone routers. Uh, in a fashion that does not generate broadcasts over the fabric, which is pretty cool. It actually uh, rep represents a function that is required by the .11 um, specifications, but is actually not provided by the ATF, or was not provided by the ATF so far. So that's pretty much what we are, we are ach achieving with these uh, changes in, in our... Um, obviously, we didn't do it for Wi-Fi, but it has this interesting side effect that it does this. So, like I said, we have three drafts. So the update is the one that passed our group last call. So it's uh, it's it's uh, I have some uh, state after that, but it's basically uh, um, ready to to send to the ISG. We wanted to publish some needs, maybe. So Samita said she had some needs that she wanted to add to it. No, none of them is working anymore. Um, the, the second draft is uh, doing something that was not that does not to my knowledge, as an equivalent at layer two, which is when a device roams from a place to an AP, a layer three AP, a backbone router, to another backbone router, we can actually uh, validate through a proof of ownership that it is the same guy that is registering the same address as before. So that prevents an attacker from making it believe to uh, the new AP, the new backbone router, that he is the guy that was there, impersonating him to get his traffic or to do whatever else. So now we, we are actually protecting against impersonation. And last but not least, the backbone router basically does all the proxy and the operation so that the device can seamlessly move from a backbone router to another backbone router and still gets reachability from the subnet and from the rest of the internet. So for this one, like I said, uh, many thanks to Charlie actually, so, so thanks to his review and uh, the work group last call, we have uh, improved the quality of the document. We didn't change much of the content, but we improved the quality and the readability. And Samita said she wants a few needs added as a dot .11, but um, as a dash 11, <laughs> uh, but uh, that will be minor, and then we are ready to share. Oh, it's a different slide, maybe. So the second slide where is the one on which I want to spend more time, it's the address protection draft. This one. So we have, uh, there were some holes actually, so we got, we got some, some good reviews by Bob Moscovich and, and uh, René Strick. Um, so some things were a bit underspecified, like uh, exactly which curve you're using, because there are variations of curves. Uh, which links we uh, were pointing on, on the specification that we needed to refer to normatively. So we have fixed this sort of thing. So now um, we, we have a clear, you need to stepwise approach to how you encode things. And we have uh, agility, so we have two chains. We can use uh, RSA or we can use uh, Edwards curve, actually one, one of the Edwards curves. And we can encode it in the, in the packet. So we have added agility, we have uh, made it a lot clearer the steps and which bits you keep to build uh, everything. We have one minor difference with the usual way of coding things, and that comes from Rene. So Rene basically told us that you know if you use this suite, people will use a SHA-256, but then it's a SHA-512. And if you have an implementation and you want to cover both, oh, now you need to implement all this. Okay, so for, for the Edwards, now we went down to SHA-256 which is a change to what people are used to so that you can have a single implementation for, for, for your hash coding. Right? That's the sort of thing we've done uh, based on uh, René's feedback. Um, more important maybe for the implementer is René has published a document at Elwig, which we don't want to paraphrase, which tells you all sorts of things you can do to make your implementation simpler and to avoid duplicate code. So we are simply pointing on, uh, as an informational reference to uh, René's document. So if you want to implement those two uh, ways of securing, so one is mandatory and, and the, so TSA is the mandatory one. Um, anyway, so one is mandatory and the other is not. 
And so if you want to implement both, there's a way to make your code uh, a lot smaller, and that's given in, in René's uh, document. Okay, and like I said, we have now clear references to everything we refer. So um, we asked René to help us on the document because he helped so much that we, we would like him as a co-author and maybe do a, a final cleanup, but we are pretty happy already with what's in there. So we think we are ready for SegDir and René will help us pass through SegDir review. So if you could just prepare that and then we could. Yeah. Um, I also wonder if we get, we had a pretty good review um, by René. Yes. I'm, I'm kind of wondering what additional value a sector review would bring. I mean, we, we already got it, basically. Right, we got Bob to help us, then we got and, and René, René to help us. So we're... And Mohit is an expert on that field as well, right? So, so it's kind of... Um, yeah, yeah, but, but he's one of the authors. So, the I mean, it's, it's good to have a separate set of eyes, and we did have those. Yes. And so I'll think about it, but um, I'm kind of wondering if we actually need to have an explicit <laughs> one, or so I'll, I'll double check. I'll, Public Suresh are flying about. And by the way, the name came back. It's NIST, obviously. I was looking for the name of NIST, and NIST is the default. And then you can go to it once. I'm sorry, I was coming back for the. the okay. Oh, okay. Um, I was saying there are there is a default uh, chain of you know um, uh, crypto and hash, and the default is NIST 256, and the 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 agility comes from Edwards. That's what's in the draft now. Sorry, Karsten. Uh, yeah, custom moment. I'm, I'm confused by your slide about uh, uh, prehash. Uh, oh, so, yes, we, do you do, do you always do prehash, or do you never do prehash, or do you have two different code points for? You have a single code point that does prehash, and that was another recommendation by Rene. We can discuss that if you don't agree. But he said basically um, that 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 allows us to have a single code path. So we said prehash all the time. Uh, that's fine with me. I only want to make sure that we no, no, identify that, that's one of the exactly changes we made doing. in 04. We actually make it clear that out of the three possibilities, we, we support only one that's pre -ash. Fine. Uh, quick question. Um, did you say you kept RSA? It's not just purely ECC? No, it's, uh, it's I think it's purely ECC. Okay. So you did, you're not keeping RSA? No, no, it's, it's my mind. I was looking for NIST and the DS yeah, jumped okay, okay. into the, 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 the... It's certainly not in the current draft. <laughs> well, they said there I say NIST is what I was after. Oh. Uh, Suresh Krishnan. Uh, so, you want to take the review before the working group last call? Or, like, uh, I, I'm fine either way, but I just want to understand. Um, uh, uh, actually, I had a... I didn't see you were here. So, yeah, I have a question for you. We have a very good review by Rene and Bob, uh, which resulted in this version now. And I'm wondering what additional value would a sector review have? I mean, we already got Rene. He's probably going to be the person that they would have assigned anyways. Okay. So do we need a sector review? No, ready? we're going to get one anyway, right? Like, so once the document goes into ITF last call, we're going to get a sector review. Okay. So, like, it's not going to be an issue. So if you want another additional one before you go through, that's fine. I can do an early request, but it's not necessary if, like, if you think it's ready to go. Like, it's just to avoid any late surprises that come up after, mm -hmm. like, ITF last call. So if a sec AD comes and says, like, this is completely nuts and take it out, right? Other than that, like, that, you kind of avoid that going back through the process, that's pretty much it. Right. So if you're reasonably confident that this is like working I, stuff, we'll just take it forward. I have a warm and fuzzy, but let me double check with Renee. Okay, that's, that's I, fine. Like, I, so actually, your call. So if okay. you want like early review, just like... And if we do that, I'll let you know about... Yeah. Okay. Actually, what we want to do is add Renee as a co-author and give him a final pen on this document before we ask for a uh, last call. That's fine too. That's fine. Uh, if Gabe is okay, Gabe and Samit yeah, are yeah, okay. Yeah, no, like I'm good. It actually reflects his contribution. That makes sense. And on the backbone router, I don't have much uh, to say. I mean, it's been very, very stable for quite a bit of time. And it's not a surprise because this document started 10 years ago. Uh, it was initially merged into what became 6775. It was split as in the six low and times. There were already implementations at that time. Those implementations have been updated. Now they, they follow uh, the, the 67.75 update document. Uh, but we didn't get any um, 
thing to say. Uh, I think, uh, Charlie, you said you would do a, a, an in-depth review of this document. Yes, you said that, right? And hopefully if we could find another review, but after that we'll be ready for last call, I, I think. I mean, there was no change for a long time and it's been implemented, tested, stable. So I don't know what to say. Anybody have any comments or observations on whether this document is ready for working with last call? Any objections? I would really love to say to find another uh, reviewer who, who cares to, to make an in-depth review of it because work of last call sometimes nobody comes back or few people. If there could be a commitment by someone to go deep into this document, just like Charlie. How, how many people have read this document, the backbone router? document okay anybody willing to give it one last look before we declare it ready for wearing a bless call Charlie's Charlie, gone. thank you okay. please <laughs> no oh thank you Alex oh, Alex okay okay and with this also you're done. Uh, yep. Okay, we're ready for applicability and use cases. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Yong Gun Hong. I present the sixth row uh, use case document. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is the history of this document. So, you know, we discussed from uh, three years ago. So, in the last year, this document was adopted as a working group document. So, in this time, it is the third version. So, I want to emphasize the goal of this document. So, this document is to help sixth row
this meeting, I met a uh, Subiro, so I'm asking, is there any updated part? So I'm waiting his uh, response. So if I get a new updated part, then I will reflect this in the next revision. So JupyterMesh mesh also have the uh, similar, and this kind of the JupyterMesh mesh can be used to uh, smart query, uh, smart grid. And uh, this is uh, design space dimension. So in the blue uh, character is uh, the new added one. So I repeat, uh, wired and wireless. Uh, plenty of six row in create technologies are wireless except MSTP and PLC. The selection of wires or wireless link layer technology is mainly depend on the requirement of the six row use cases and the characteristic of wired wireless technology. For example, some uh, six-row use cases may require easy and quick deployment, and some six-row use cases may require continuous source of power for a long lifetime. Pascal Tuber, so you're talking about use case, and the use case is the end-to-end -end application. So sometimes it takes more than one six-row hop. To, to implement a, a use case, for instance, on a smart grid, you will you will get multi-hop, and you may, in that case, get different types of hops. For instance, it's often now a common place to find 15.4 NPLC in parallel in the smart grid. Okay. So, so if you want to mention that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so I'm asking Kerry. Kerry is there, so is it happy to <laughs> see this, uh, your text? So let me know. Okay, so in the appendix part, we describe some the uh, six row use cases. Uh, that is the uh, typical, the so based on the each uh, link layer technology. For example, if we use the G Wave, uh, it can be it can be used for smart home. If we use the BLE, it can be used to uh, smartphone based interaction. And if we use the tech really can be used a smart home similar to G-Wave. And if we use the MSTP, we can use it the district heating. And if we use NFC, it can utilize uh, alternative secure transfer for the healthcare services. If we use a PLC, it can be used to smart grid. And if we use the i 3 a echo it can be used for industrial automation. Do you have a comment? Hi, yes. Uh, wow, this mic is really bad. <laughs> Dave Robin, can you back up one slide? Um, and this was on your summary sheet to your big grid that said that. Um, you might have got this from Kerry, but since Kerry's not here, I'll yep. sort of channel his. This is a humorously tiny uh, subset of the capability for MSTP. I mean, MSTP is for all of building automation. It's widely deployed in commercial building space. So uh, district heating is just makes me chuckle okay. as, as being so tiny. It, it really should be building automation, building writ large. OK, yes. thank you. <laughs> thank you for comment. We need your comment like you. Yeah, so uh, if you use, so I uh, must say that we are not expert or the kind of te technology. So some also uh, have some uh, specific uh, knowledge about each technology. So if you have more information, and if you think it is uh, needs to be updated, so let us know that we can uh, make progress. Okay, thank you. Any other comment and question? Any... Um, what are the goals for, say, before London? Do you think it'll be ready and done? I mean, we've been iterating for I mean, a couple of years, maybe, on this one. So, yes, I'm thinking about this. So, uh, so I want to discuss the other author. So, in my personal opinion, uh, we are uh, uh, kind of ready. But as we, after I discuss other author, then, and after you consulting, the chairs, then we can decide the next step. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think we need to be, we don't want to be exhaustive. We just want to have some example uh, cases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Example. Yes, you are right. It seems but, like we have plenty already. So that's why I'm wondering what else can we do with it? Maybe it's almost ready. So yeah, maybe, maybe before London type thing, you think? Or? Yes, I try. <laughs> okay. okay. 
Dave Robin again. Let me make it clear. I'm not attacking you as an author to be clairvoyant. I don't expect you to know everything. So I that is not uh, not your fault at all. You have way too many to keep track of. So I will get with Carrie and we will give you some feedback on some better okay, examples. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. yeah. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Oh. Oh. Yeah, my name is Young Wan Choi from Korea. And this is this slide every time I show you the first the kick of NFC introduction. The same. So maybe everybody knows about this the information. And this is history and status. Um, actually this time is eighth revision. Actually uh to, from the first revision, there we I, I would like to I would like to make it the last call, and then we had a lot of reviews from Dave and Pascal and James and, and so and so on. So this time, just we changed the IID generation and and the issues. Uh, first one is about the the IID generation. Actually, uh, the gave the Dave gave gave me that comment that we need some uh, 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 stable IID, so functional um, uh, generation algorithm. So I just put a new function about for that. But uh, uh, James gave us the, the another comment. The, uh, this is uh, in June. Uh, we, uh, we have already RFC 72, 11, and 17. There's a function for the stable but uh, random but stable IID generation function there. So just we follow this function in this document. So just I put like this. The point one is one 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 thing is I want to point is that the blue, uh, red line. There's a lot of parag uh, parameters there. Just one is the uh, net I, uh, interface interface. The paragraph that would be just uh, the corresponding with the L, uh, NFC link layer address. The next uh, change is the end issues from the Pascal. Um, actually, he gave me the comment. The point is how the two devices meet. No, uh, when two devices meet, how they can they they know the who is the LBR or LR. So just I put this to new text here in the blue box. But uh, at, uh, before this meeting, I just talk about the Pascal about this this new text. But actually, this new text fully resolute to his comments. So I would, I I will to put the. The new text for this at this uh, meeting, maybe I will produce a new uh, version of this document. And next it, uh, is the, actually the editorial update. The first one is I changed the reference style here. And the second is that we had uh, some uh, paragraph about the con con uh, secret construction cons uh, cons uh, considerations. But actually, this paragraph, the, doesn't need any more because we resolved the other part here, the so, uh, IO generation. So I just get rid of this whole of the paragraph. And this one is the, uh, this slide is actually about the review uh, with the NFC forum. But we had a lot of discussion about the, with them, and there there are no feedback from the NFC forum. So I think the the feedback from the NFC forum is done. And next step, actually, I just put the history of the uh, document review for working Rust call. And the first one is from Dave Stella. Uh, thank you so much. And the second one is uh, James and Pascal. Also, thank you. And actually, I just reserve this all of the review comment and feedback. But just I want to change some more from the Pascal comment, additional comment. So after that, I may will be. I think I'm ready to the working Blasco, I believe. Thank you. Any comment?
Any objections or comments on potentially going to work in group last call? Okay, sounds, sounds doable. Okay, so hello, this is Chen Chang Ho from Huawei, and today my topic is transmission of IPv6 packets over PLC networks. So this is a second version of this draft, and uh, okay, next page. So the status of this draft I um, present, oh sorry, uh, so what is PLC? The PLC uh, refers to the power line communication. So uh, PLC using the electric power lines for indoor and outdoor communications. And uh, now and nowadays it has been applied to the advanced metering infrastructure, namely AMI. Uh, so about the status of this draft, I present this draft first time in Chicago meeting and received comments from Samita, Stefano, and Seri. And well, here the Stefano and Seri are the PLC experts from the ITUT. And then, uh, then uh, based on these comments, I update to the version one and the present in Prague. And thanks to uh, and thanks Pascal for his comments. And uh, then I try to connect to both sides of IEEE and ITUT. And then uh, today I'm going to present the second version. Actually, just a quick update, and uh, to introduce the progress in connecting the IEEE and ITUT, and also some changes in this draft. So about the progress in connecting the IEEE and ITUT, the reason why I tried to connect to these two SDO is because uh, they there are two PLC standards, namely IEEE 101.2 and ITUT G.903 are included in this draft. So about the IEEE side, I have received the, the, consolidated, the, the consolidated comments from the IEEE PLC standard committee last week. And I will reflect these comments in the, in the next version. And about ITUT, I had uh, uh, several email um, exchanges and uh, telephone uh, and uh, calls with the um, this uh, SG15 Q15 uh, and this SG15 Q15 chairs. And finally, I will attend this uh, group uh, 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 this group e meeting on December to discuss this draft and to get the group opinion. Uh, so, and about the updates, uh, there are two changes in this draft. Uh, one is the structure change. Uh, in, in this version, I combine the subsection 4.1 and 4.2, namely the separate uh, subsections for the 101.2 and 903. I combine them together into a whole section. I do this because there is no need to repeat some common information twice. For example, the, um, the status um, address or the configuration are the same. I just combine them together into a, a, a whole section, and uh, if there and when there are some differences, I just put them in separate paragraphs. So about the terminology, I, uh, I the must must not show shall not are removed in this version. This is to minimize the possible conflicts with these two SDOs. And today, after discuss with uh, Gabriel, I will maybe change it back. So. <laughs> Montenegro. So I think what we're looking at is maybe uh, potentially going uh, either of two ways, ways. Yeah. potentially going in two different directions. Um, if we really don't want to have any conflicts, that means what we have is an informational document, in which case, yeah, having no uh, compliance language is, is fine. It's, it's actually expected. So if that's, so it's a question for, to the working group, to the authors and to the working group, uh, is the goal of this document to, uh, pardon the redundancy, to document what is being done elsewhere, and that might be okay, then yeah, no compliance is okay, and we'll have an informational document. If we want a standard track document, then presumably it better have some musts to guarantee interoperability, because we cannot assume that everybody who's gonna read that document, standard track, if we decide to go that way, will be able to implement in an up in an operal in an interop do interoperable fashion without the necessary musts that take care of that 
of that aspect of a, of a specification. Uh, nor w should we assume that they're going to have access to the ITU documents or whatever. So we have to assume that if we have a center track document, it's an RFC with uh, maybe some reference elsewhere, but basically this defines the interoperability. So it's a, it's, it's a very basic question. Are we documenting what is already done elsewhere? And yes. that might be the right approach. If, for example, what is being done elsewhere already is working well and has enough implementations, uh, et cetera, et cetera, that we don't want to, you know, we maybe don't want to mess around with it because it's already working fine. So why pick something that ain't broke? Yeah. So uh, the reason I put this job in this working group is because uh, there is, uh, I'd say there is needed for a draft to be in this group to uh, be, to act as a guidance for the PLC deployment. I do this because in both our AAA and ITT side, people are just focusing on the uh, on the bottom layers, and they do uh, have a let's say appendix referring to six node pen. But after that, they found well, actually, not all those functions defined in six node pen are useful. Take the AAA one hundred one dot two for an example. Uh, they already have a segmentation on layer two, and then uh, they also refer to the fragmentation in 6 pan and in that case, actually, this fragmentation is not useful at all. So I think uh, there should be a guidance for here and uh, to when people about, when people do the PLC deployments, they can um, find this draft and, uh, follow the, and follow this guidance. Yeah, so this is my uh, main purpose of this draft. You just said follow the guidance. So that implies we need to have musts. This is not just, I mean, yes, yes. It, 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 it's a mandatory type guide. I mean, it's something that will guarantee interoperability that apparently it's not guaranteed with the level of detail that they currently have. So then maybe this is standard track. And in that case, yes, we would need to make sure that the proper musts and shells or whatever get sprinkled throughout the document here. Yeah, okay. Now, of course, it would be good if these things, these musts and shells and whatever, actually reflect what they are, or most of them may already be doing. Because there may be some confusion, but most of them maybe already are on the right track or have figured it out. So it'd be, it would be good to not, you know, uh, without any good reason, to not depart from that existing practice over there. And, and I don't know the state of, of, of PLC in the industry. So it's more a question for, for you. And, Thank you for your comments. Carsten Bormann, um, I don't think you, you can do a six-law specification by, by uh, just pointing to some six-law pen documents and, and say it, it's all like this because uh, six-law pen is, is different <laughs> from, from another link layer. So um, it looks like there are some gaps uh, between the six low pen specification and, and the lower layer specifications in the two standards organizations. And the current situation is that essentially implementers have to figure it out. And uh, how do they figure it out? Of course, they, they compare their implementation with one implementation they consider to be the leading implementation, and then they are done. Um, that's not a standard. Um, so um, uh, filling in this gap will require some normative statements some musts and must nots and, and so on. Um, and um, I think it would be good to do just that. Okay, thank you. So, okay, that's all. And thank you very much for your comments. So, I don't think we're quite ready for adoption yet. I think we need to figure out exactly, and if it seems like it, but it, it, if, if you confirm that what we want to do is actually uh, write a standards track, then you know, at least have a first version that has a beginning of com uh, of a spec with compliance language and everything, then then we can think about adoption. But, and also, and the most importantly, because we also want to see how your meeting with them goes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Hello, <coughs> good afternoon. I am Sajjad, uh, final year PhD student from London. So this is our draft. Like I have, I have presented this draft in Prague. 
it's transmission of IPv6 packet server wireless body resistance body area networks. So it's our second draft. We updated the draft uh, with the feedback from authors and uh, Samita, she sent us a detailed feedback. Uh, so we will see today what changes we have applied. The current status like is still informational, but uh, now we want to, uh, our intent is to make it standard track. And uh, we are looking for feedback and suggestions. This is a, just a quick introduction for uh, wireless, uh, sorry, wireless body area sensor network. Like we are, we are using the standard IEEE 802.15.6, which was standardized in 2012, and it's still an active standard in IEEE, which is specifically for uh, body area networks. So, in my previous presentation, I have mentioned its scope, why it is important, uh, its effectiveness in patient monitoring systems, like uh, they have specific bands from patients like medical implant communication service and uh, they also uh, take care of the human tissues so no harms can occur due to some frequencies to human tissues these are some uh, details are mentioned so what are the updates from the previous uh, presentation like we have reduced the uh, w band introductory part like in our pre uh, first draft we have mentioned uh, many things about introduction of the w band uh, like use cases and other stuff. So we were, after feedback, we have reduced this. And uh, the second change, like uh, we have proposed an adoption layer, uh, which, like which we have mentioned it specification of IPv6 over WBAN uh, that lists the main feature for, uh, to adopt it for IPv6. Uh, I will show you the detail for this. Another change, like we have added uh, appendix, another appendix with the name of appendix C, which uh, describe the changes we have made in this second draft. So here you can see, uh, you can see I have highlighted the updated version. Like we have added the uh, uh, section six specification of IPv6 over WBAN, and uh, we carefully we have added all the essential element for this section, and we have reduced the upper section which was uh, more in the last presentation. And you can see in the, in, we have added Appendix C, which uh, described the changes in details. So uh, just for a quick look, like uh, for the state, uh, stateless address auto configuration, 64-bit uh, uh, ID shall be derived utilizing 8-bit node address, which is mentioned in IEEE 802.15.6, and 8-bit BAN ID. So we are uh, using these two IDs to make our stateless auto configuration address. Similarly, uh, link local address, it is generated. I think most of you know how it will work, like uh, how we can generate uh, six IPv6 link local address by appending 64 bits of uh, double ID. Uh, we have started looking to the header compression things. So initially we have figured out like, because we are not focusing on uh, mesh topologies. So, Rahul Jadav, who are we? Uh, can you please go back to the previous slide uh, before this one? So here, it will be better if we can form the IID in the, using the ban ID can be moved to the last uh, short uh, short bit short byte, so as to improve the compression ratio that can be achieved with some other compression techniques like six low RH. This will. Uh, uh, result in loss of compression uh, reduction in compression ratio. Okay, thank you. We will look at. Thank you, um, Dave Taylor. Uh, so, if I understand right, this has all the same uh, privacy issues that the NFC document had before that one changed, and so you might look at using a similar solution as the NFC document that was just presented, which is don't just pad, use a hash. Thank you. So uh, for the compression, we we have figured out two things because we are uh, still not uh, looking for the mesh topologies. So we have decided to use six slow pan HCI, HC1 that can be used. And another option is static headers compression techniques. We will look for this, or we can use this uh, for 15.6. Yeah, this is a brief uh, presentation. And I have mentioned the changes we have made from our previous draft. So any question, comments, or suggestions?
Yeah, I would um, second what Dave said. I think we have a document that is privacy considerations. I think any uh, any future document coming out of this working group has to look at that, at least reference it, consider it, and and, and have some language as to how that is being taken into consideration. So please do look at that document and, and modify yours appropriately. OK, we, we will look at, uh, like uh, for the privacy and these uh, security things, IEEE 15.6, they have also uh, some guidelines for them. So we have also used them, but we will also look for this document as well and we will refer it. Please. Um, did you, I might have missed it, did you mention 15.6 committee? Have they looked at this? Have they commented? What's the, what's the status there? Yeah, I have talked to Bob, like he's here two, three days back. So, uh, Bob, is there anything you can add on this? Has there been any communication with 15.6? The question is, this basically uses 15.6, 15.6 underlying technology. And every time, every time we do that, then we talk with the committee in charge of that underlying technology to make sure that we're not conflicting in some way, make sure, hopefully, more than that, we're actually cooperating and coordinating. So th this depends on 802.15.6. And uh, the question is, has that committee been made aware? What is their opinion? Are we, what is the status of, of, of that? The um, uh, Bob Hiley, um, IEEE 802.15 chair. Um, actually, we're in the process now of doing a number of things with 15.6, including uh, uh, getting it adopted as an ISO IEC JTC 1 SC6 standard. Uh, and so, <laughs> Uh, so that's just about complete. We have, uh, it's passed the uh, ballot. Uh, we have two comments to resolve, one from Japan and one from China, but uh, it's a done deal basically on that. So we're actually kind of, this is very timely. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, we've been in communication with each other. And the fact that we're now trying to push it more broadly through a number of global SDOs um, I think just sort of this kind of uh, discussion and additional work is uh, is very fruitful. Okay. So um, we should take it offline, but yeah, maybe we should coordinate how to get this, you know, in front of the committee. Thank you. Okay, so maybe I should just... Um, yeah, so I just wanted to give uh, an update on, just wanted to give an update on where we are with respect to the uh, fragmentation issue. Last time in Prague, we had um, a good half hour at least to discuss about fragmentation, and it uh, was clear after that there was a lot of interest for uh, to, uh, to go solve the problem for fragmentation, the case of route over, not for the case of Meshander. And furthermore, uh, it seemed likely that a good approach would be to form a design team. So uh, we finally did that. We actually had a first meeting, incipient meeting of the design team. This ITF, um, the current members, as you can see, are Thomas uh, Watain as the lead for the design team. We have Karsten, Rahul, Pascal, Carles, and Gori, uh, as someone who represents a lot of uh, the transport area background that would be useful in this discussion. Um, and I sh so first of all, thanks to the design team members for uh, agreeing to participate. Um, I think we should extend a special thanks to Thomas, who flew over all the way here from Paris. Um, I don't know if ours was the only meeting, but at least he dedicated a good time of, of the few hours he was here to us. And then he got uh, hopped on a plane back. That's, uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> was that? Yeah, so, right, so, okay. 
that was that was cool. Anyway, so um, definitely that we have uh, passionate people, interested people in the design team. Um, we feel like we have uh, two uh, good proposals, Carson and Pascal, that represent sort of different uh, extremes of the spectrum, if you will. If, uh, and uh, we think we have enough material, so the design team will go off and figure out, you know, with those with those two proposals. Uh, it, uh, it seems like he, that we should be able to come up with something at least initial proposal to the working group by London is what uh, what I heard. Um, okay, Carson? Um, yeah, Carson, well, we, we still have to, to finish uh, the, the proposal, but uh, the, the shape what you just said, um, uh, the, the one extreme would be uh, to just document in an informational way uh, how six low pan fragmentation can be used in a way that avoids many of the problems that people are experiencing. So this is informational only, and the other extreme would be to add protocol, to add mechanism, um, and of course get get more functionality that way, but also require change yeah. uh, from so, what we have. Yeah. So that's what the design team has to look at, the trade-offs, figure out, or maybe it's a gradated we, we, approach, whatever. We're so. not so much looking into the trade-offs, but just doing the two things. So we, we have something concrete we can talk about. Yes, sounds good, okay. Um, that's all we have for the agenda today. Um, anything else? Anybody? It's open mic time, so go at it. Uh, if there's nothing else, who's got the blue sheets? Blue sheets? Maybe they're back. No, I don't see. I I distributed at the at the beginning of the meeting on both sides. So if you haven't signed the blue sheet, please do so. And other than that, I think we're done. Thanks very much. Oh, and if you have any minutes that you took, please send it to send them to the chairs that would help compiling for the final minutes. Thanks again. Ouais, non, c'est vrai. Il est déjà parti. Euh, Charlie, Thanks, Steve. Avant que tu parles de quel draft Bac Moreau, tout à fait. Oui, ouais, bien sûr. On, on a, en fait, on a modifié le draft de, avec Lorenzo. Ouais, je me souviens.